Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared interesting problem for you and here's a problem a cross between two pea plants with uh, genotypes as follows uh, results in F1 generation that is 25% uh, genotype that is homozygous dominant for both genes 50% which is heterozygous for both genes and 25% which is homozygous recessive for both genes, which reason most likely explains why other possible genotypes are not present. So take a look how we are going to solve this problem. And so this problem is very simple, but there are so many different combinations exist that uh, to find the right combination and right answer can be uh, time consuming. Um, for example, uh, for me it took about uh, five minutes and I worked on three different approaches. So uh, take a look. Uh, for example, instead of um, these letters, I'm going to use A and B because P looks similar, especially if we will uh, use them in uh, vertical positions. So P capital and P small would look similar. So instead of P and L genes, I'm going to use A and B. So again, this is one of my approaches. Uh, you don't necessarily, in order to solve a problem, have to use the same letters. Uh, you can change letters to whatever you like, uh, which would be easier. So basically we have two uh, genotypes here, which are the same. Uh, both parents are heterozygous for both genes. And now let me represent these genotypes as chromosomes. So here is one chromosome of parent one, and here is the second chromosome of the parent one. And say uh, somewhere here we have gene A, and somewhere here we have gene A. B. And here we have a recessive allele A and recessive allele B. And this is going to be genotype capital A small A and capital B small B. So as you see, uh, this parent parent one would be heterozygous for both genes. So parent one. Again, genotype would be capital A small a, capital B small b. I just change letters here. Now let's also add a genotype of the parent 2. So parent 2 here. And again, genotype is going to be the same. We have the same homologous chromosomes. And on one we have dominant allele A and dominant allele B and on the other recessive allele A and recessive allele B. Why uh, again it took me uh, three attempts in order to solve this problem because different combinations are possible. Take a look for example we may have one chromosome which would have dominant allele A and recessive allele B on this side and here we may have recessive allele A and dominant allele B on this side. So different variants possible. So one parent can be of um, such genotype, another can be of this genotype with dominant alleles on one chromosome and recessive alleles on the other chromosome. So as you see, many different variants possible uh, when uh, two parents can have the same uh, genotype, but this would be different if we will take a close look at chromosomes. So on chromosomal level, uh, these same genotypes can be very different. So uh, now what we are going to have in the next F1 generation, for example, if we assume that no crossing over happens between gene a and B. 
So imagine that these genes are so close on the chromosome that no crossing over happen here. That means that um, parent one only can produce two variants uh, of the uh, gametes where the, we can find in haploid gamete this chromosome or this chromosome. And parent two also can uh, produce only this variant of the chromosome in the gamete or this variant of the chromosome and no crossing over happens because gene A and B are very close together on the same chromosome. So what we are going to get in F1 generation. So one combination would be if we combine this chromosome of parent one with this chromosome of the parent two. So uh, what genotype we are going to have? We are going to get capital A, capital A, capital B, and capital B. And as you see, this would stand for 25 percent. Next variant, we can have, for example, in the F1 generation, a combination of this chromosome and this chromosome of the parent two. So what genotype would be in the F1 generation? From parent one, we would have capital A. And from the parent two, we will have small a. So small a here, from parent one, we would have capital B, and from the parent two, small b. So capital B and small b. So this is going to be a second genotype, and again, this would stand for 25% of the uh, all variants possible. Now, we have a third combination. Uh, for example, we may have this chromosome of the parent one and this chromosome of the parent two. So what genotype is going to be uh, from parent one, we have recessive allele A from the parent two, dominant allele A. So genotype is going to be capital A, small a, and as for the gene B, from parent one, it's going to be recessive allele B, from the parent two, dominant allele B. So the genotype would be for the gene B, capital B, and small b. Again, this would stand for 25% of all combinations. And the last combination, so we have only four combinations here. So each combination would be one quarter or 25%. So the last combination would be if uh, in the progeny we would see that this chromosome from parent one combined with this chromosome of parent two. So what genotype we can expect? Small a allele from parent one and small a allele from the parent two. So genotype in the progeny for the gene A is going to be small a, small a. As for the gene B, uh, the progeny is going to get small b from parent one and small b from parent two. So for the gene B, uh, F1 generation uh, also would have two recessive alleles. And again, this would stand for another 25%. So only four combinations are possible. But take a look, these two combinations are the same. So genotype, as you see, is the same. Capital A, small a, capital B, small b, and the same genotype here. So we can say that uh, here we have 50%. And now, uh, as you see, mm, let's check uh, what uh, variants are given in our problem. So 25%. In a F1 generation, so again, this is all possible combinations of the F1 generation. Uh, we would see that homozygous dominant for both genes would stand for 25%. So 25%. And 
50% would be uh, genotypes, which is uh, heterozygous for both uh, genes. And this is what we see here. 50% of the progeny would be heterozygous for both genes. And last 25%, uh, we expect that uh, going to be homozygous recessive for both genes. And this is, again, what we see here. Many different combinations would be possible if crossing over would happen between gene A and B, between two homologous chromosomes of the parent one and parent two. Uh, so we would have, for example, genotypes, uh, which is homozygous dominant for the gene A and homozygous recessive for the gene B. We don't see such genotype here. Or another combination, uh, homozygous dominant for the gene a and heterozygous for the gene B. We also do not see such combination. And homozygous dominant for the gene B, heterozygous for the gene A. So as you see, many variants uh, possible are missing here if we assume that um, crossing over would happen between gene A and B. But if we assume that these genes are so close together on the same chromosome, that no crossing over happens between these genes, then uh, this model would explain why we miss some of the genotypes and would explain these numbers. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.